evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Very good. Now, we are on page 12, and we are learning how to find the topic. So, I want you to look at section 7, and I am going to read the words in blue. Finding the topic, you translate this word. A paragraph in English describes one topic. All the sentences in the paragraph usually refer to that topic. Find the topic. Ask yourself who, what, each sentence refers to. Who or what the sentence is about. Understand? Yeah. So, we have three photos here. Three very different people. We are going to read each paragraph. And you will need to answer the question about what it is about. Sound easy? Yes. Good. Here's the catch. There will be no translation in these paragraphs. Only English. You will need to use your vocabulary. All right? All right. Number one. This is my brother Kenneth. His nickname is Ken. He's at school, but he isn't a student. He's a teacher. Okay. He's a teacher now. Oh, he's a teacher now. Thank you. He's a teacher now. What is this about? Sir Jaza? Yes. Yes. Very good. When you look at this paragraph, how many words do you understand? Quantas palavras vocês entendem? How many understand 50% or more? Quantas pessoas aqui entendem 50% ou mais? Very good. Very good. And if there is a word that you do not understand, we can use our limited vocabulary to find the topic. For example, The cat's name is Jesse. Jesse is very 
irritated and not happy. Who knows this word? Cat. Cat. What is cat? Animal. Animal. What, what animal? Gato. So we know this? In Portuguese? Small. What is this? Yeah, Jesse. And name, yes? And name. So we know that? We know that? Very. Muito. We know that? Irritado. You guys know that? Yeah. And not happy. Let's imagine he didn't know this word. You could look at the context and try to understand the significance. For example, the cat's name is Jesse. That one's not very helpful. Except, translate. It explains who Jesse is. Right? So Jesse is very irritated and not happy. Well, I want to know what irritated is. I look here. And I can understand this is an adjective. It describes the other adjectives right here. The word and means a, which is means these two are the same, yes? So if something is not happy. Not happy. We can assume that this word here means something similar. Yes? So this could mean angry, it means bravo, nervoso. We could assume it means many of those things. At this moment, understanding the definition of irritated is not your focus. This is your first semester. You are still learning your vocabulary. You are learning to find the topic, learning to understand the context by using the words you already know. Understand? So number two. This is C.C. Arleano. C.C.'s her nickname. It's short for Cecilia. She's from Mexico. She's in my English class. She's very nice and she's a good student. What is the subject? My friend. Why? You know, to be honest, I remember last year, everybody got that one wrong too. Why? If we look at every sentence, we have to look sentence by sentence and say, what is this about? Because one or two of those sentences is about the class. But the majority of the sentences are about her. For example, number one. This is C.C. 
Arleano. Is that about a class or the friend? The friend. Number two, CC's her nickname. Class or friend? Friend. Number three, it's short for Cecilia. Friend. She's from Mexico. Friend. So the first four, oh, she's in my English class. No. Friend again. The word she's. She is. The main focus of every sentence is about a girl named Cece Arleon. So on the test, you will need to be careful and make sure that you understand what each sentence is about. Everyone understand? Any confusion on this? No? Alright, number three. It's nice to meet you, class. I'm Mr. Patel. I'm from Santa Monica in California. I'm your new teacher. My office is 12B. Come say hello. A new teacher. Now, how difficult was this for you guys? No? Very good. I want you to go to section B. And we have three questions. And we need to match it to the correct answers. So number one, Ken. What is he? He's a teacher. A teacher. Number two, CC. Very good. Her last name is Arleano. Number three, Mr. Patel. Perfect. You guys are awesome with that. Any difficulty on this section at all? Alguma dificuldade nessa sessão? No? No. Perfect. All right. Now we can do something fun. Agora a gente pode fazer algo divertido. We get to learn about using polite language. Nós vamos usar agora, aprender a usar palavras educadas. All right. Why is this important? Por que que isso é importante? Education. Education shows that you are polite. You might know how to say some words in English. You might, you may. But if you use them the wrong way, they can be very offensive. You can change a question into a command. It's a very touchy thing. And imagine you are going to the United States. And maybe you are a very nice Brazilian. Like Fernando. Fernando, you are a very soft-spoken, nice person. I've known him for several months. But imagine Mas that he did not know how to use polite language. Que ele não saiba usar palavras educadas. He could seem like a very angry person. Ele pode parecer, se ele não soubesse, ele poderia parecer uma pessoa muito brava. Or say things in a bad way. Ou falar coisas de um modo muito errado. And if he went to the United States and did that, e se ele for para os Estados Unidos assim, what would happen? What are Americans famous for? Os americanos são famosos por quê? Being nice and friendly and accepting people like Brazilians? Porque eles são muito amorosos. No. no. <laughs> When the British came into our country and tried to make us follow their commands? Quando os britânicos entraram no nosso país e tentaram dar ordens para nós? What did we do? O que a gente fez? We killed them. A gente matou todos. 
When they sent more soldiers, what did we do? What? When they sent more, we killed more. Quando eles mandaram mais, eles Americans are known for being radical extremists. Os americanos são conhecidos por serem muito radicais. And it's the same with communication. E é o mesmo com a comunicação. Maybe you have a job here in Brazil. Talvez você tenha um trabalho aqui no Brasil. And you need to communicate with somebody who speaks English in the United States. Vocês precisam se comunicar com alguém que fala inglês nos Estados Unidos. If you don't know how to use polite language. Se você não sabe, não sabe como ser educado. I probably won't kill you. Maybe. But you know what I will do? We'll hang up the phone. I won't waste my time on you. And we won't get anything accomplished. Maybe you need to reserve a hotel room. And you don't speak polite to me. I will pretend like we have a connection problem. Hello, hello, I can't hear you. Hello. And then you don't get your hotel room. Proper language. Here we go. Section eight. Using polite language and informal language. It's polite to use hello. É muito educado dizer hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Please. Please. Thank you. Thank you. When we talk to other people. Quando a gente fala com outras pessoas. With friends, com family. Amigos, família. People you know well. Pessoas que vocês conhecem muito bem. You can also use informal language. Vocês também podem usar palavras informais. Like hey, hi, and thanks. Como hey, hi. Everyone understand that? Entenderam? So let's write these down. Então vamos escrever isso. This, because I want us to write the exact uh, definition of each one of these. Can you do that? I need new markers. So we have hello. These are words. Huh? Sorry, that's no.
Just so you know, the word thanks does not exist. It's, it's a spoken word. It's slang. Okay, so everybody listen and repeat. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Please. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Thanks. Any questions on this vocabulary? Alguma pergunta a respeito desse vocabulary? I have one question. Yes. What's the difference? Thank you for thanks. Thanks is very info very informal. It's uh, street language. It's in in a oh, it's it can be translated very it's inappropriate for thanks anyone é in a business. São palavras de rua, são é é muito magia. Não se escreveria por exemplo, não se fosse obrigado em português. Obrigado. Obrigado. Okay. So, como se diz obrigado? So, this section here essa aqui, essa aqui, is all formal. São todas this section here is informal. E ali, informal. When do you use the difference? If we are in a company, você tiver numa empresa, do you speak to me formal or informal? Vocês falam informal ou formal? Formal. If you are my friend, Se você é meu amigo. informal. Everybody understands when to use the two. Perfect. Let me do this. Everybody, speak the word. Hello. 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 Good Goodbye. Good morning. Good evening. Diversos 
People with education. People who are normal. People I would have never expected this from. And I guess this isn't a problem here. But I get so angry. Someone calls my phone. Pick up my phone. And I say hello. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. When it's somebody I always try to say, you know, bom dia, boa noite. You know what they say? Que fala? Que fala? Que fala nada? I want to. Oh! You call me. And you say, que fala? Oh, I get so angry. It's shock. It says that you have no education. I hate it. I had a pastor last week call me and do that. He wanted me to come to his church. I hung up the phone on him. I don't have time for that. It's horrible people. Horrible. Do not do that. You do that in the United States. Oh. <laughs> If you want to ask who's speaking, Se você quem tá you do it after the greeting, você faz isso depois, and you você say it with education. A com a you would say, excuse me, você fala, excuse me, may I ask your name, please? Posso seu nome? That's better. Isso é if I was calling Jessica, Se eu tô pra Jessica say, good morning. Falo, good morning. Good morning, my name's Chris. Can I ask you speaking, please? My name is Chris. Can I ask who's speaking? I'm offering my name first. I call her. I don't demand information from her. That's not polite. Identify yourself and then ask nicely. When people call Uncle Sam's telephone, if they say "Can you follow?", click. No, we don't have time for it. So, if you say "Good morning" or "Good evening," so we'll say "Good evening," okay? Good evening, Red Blue Telecom, Hall speaking. What's your cell phone number? Please. Why did we say please? Why? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'm asking for information. I can't just demand things. Alright. It's seven nine five. Five 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 two seven eight nine. What's your name, please? It's David Brown. And your middle name? Michael. Michael. Then what? Huh? Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. How can I help you? Okay. This conversation is in section in the photo A. Tá na, na sessão A, certo? Ok, the photo A. Na foto A. It is somebody, a customer calling some type of service. É um cliente ligando para algum tipo de serviço. And the client's name is Red Blue Telecom. E o nome do cliente, o nome do fornecedor, whatever, Red Blue Telecom. Now, Jessica is going to be David and I will be Paul. I want you to listen to what this conversation will sound like. First, with education. Um, I'll be Paul, you be David. Ring, you guys say ring, 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 ring. Good evening, Blue Telecom, Paul speaking. What's your cell phone number, please? It's 798. 
What's your name, please? It's David Brown. And your middle name? Michael. Thank you, Mr. Brown. How may I help you? Okay, that is an example of a formal conversation we're using polite language. What would this sound like without that? Yeah. What would that sound like without this? What would this sound like without polite language? Let's see what that sounds like. Red Blue Telecom, Paul speaking. What's your cell phone number? Um, hey, phone? Hey, phone. Uh, and what's your name? It's David Brown. And your middle name? Michael. Great, Mr. Brown. How can I help you? One is good, one is horrible. One is bom e o outro é horrível. Let's try one that is informal. Vamos tentar um que agora é informal. How would it begin? Como eu posso começar? Hey, or hi. Hey, or hi. So we can say, hey, Jonas. Vamos colocar, hey, Jonas. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. What's your last name? Parker. What do we say then? We could we could add this here. Under informal. Everyone uses the phrase okay. We say okay. What's your email address? It's Jonas H. At musicmail.net. And what's your phone number? Uh, my phone number is 541-555-8426 and my cell phone number is 503-555-1330. Thanks. You can say, okay, thanks. You can say, great, thanks. Good. Thanks. All of those are informal. Todos estes são informais. Now, here's what we are going to do. Então é isso que nós vamos fazer. If you look here, se você olhar aqui, we are getting information. Nós estamos conseguindo obtendo informações. What type of information are we asking for? Que tipo de informações nós estamos pedindo? Phone number? Okay. Email address? Email? Name? Name? Anything else? Nós também sabemos o nosso nome completo. 
First, middle, and last. Primeiro, meio, novo, meio. But what about email? E quanto ao email? I had some of the same American English, but we're not space. How would I say this? Como falaria? Professor? No? What is this? No? No. We're going to Google. At. Write this down. At. Audible Sam's American English. Dot. Com. Yeah. Dot. Com. Yep. Now we do have. Nós também temos. Dot com. Dot. Br now. Dot com. Dot. Br. This is a Brazilian website. Br. How do you use it on stage? Yes. Just no, just dot com. Because the first internet was from the United States. When three computers began speaking to each other. One in, two in California and one in Utah. From the internet, the history of the internet. Yeah, you guys know the history of the internet? Yeah. yeah. Happened in the United States, three computers began communicating. It's a government, government project, and then we released it to the public. Long story, but dot com. Other countries that are now have the internet, they have the ability to put a dot and then their country code. Why would you do that? Which, which? Uh, close. One word. Google. Google is king. Google looks at your location. And if you are a Brazilian business, or somebody who wants a Brazilian audience, you can get a dot com, and that attracts the whole world. But if you do dot com dot br, it tells Google your main focus is Brazil. You can still get the whole world. But Google will automatically point Brazilians to your track. So here we go. How do we say this email address? Very good. Uh, I, yes. I have one question. Yes. Why you don't use point? Point. I. Uh, you know, when when computers were were new. You know, in the in the 60s, and they got more popular in the 70s and the 80s. Before, before the internet was widely released. Point was the phrase. It was the word that we used. In fact, when I was a child and we had the old Apple computer with the green screen, we said point. I don't know why, but when the internet came out, everyone just started saying dot. So the phrase that we all say now is dot. In fact, you need to say dot. Because people who are younger than me, like your generation, for English speakers, they don't know what computers were like before internet. They don't even know what a three and a half inch disc floppy is. Who here knows what a disc floppy is? You know a three and a half inch disc floppy? Yeah? 
It was a disc floppy that was this big. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no. She's catchy. And then they got a little bit smaller. She's catchy. Is he? Are you serious? Oh, no. This generation would, would have no reason to know. Pin drive. No. Yeah, you are the pin drive generation. Just got some pin drive. Or the cloud generation. Just catch them. We carried around these floppies that were this big, and they could hold like 10 megabytes. Then they got a little bit smaller, and you could have 100 megabytes. Oh, but they would break so easy. So, we have to use the correct terminology for the generation. Okay? So, I am going to do this. I need one volunteer. One brave volunteer. Fernando, come on up. I am going to ask you for this information and we are in a formal setting. Nós estamos agora num lugar formal. Okay? okay? And I need you to respond in a formal way. E eu preciso que você me responda de um jeito formal. Now, Fernando does not know me. Fernando não me conhece. And I don't know him. E eu não conheço o Fernando. So what do I do? Então, o que que eu faço? Can you follow? <laughs> no. No. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Chris. Nice What's you. your name? Fernando. Nice to meet you, Fernando. Can I have your telephone number, please? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, my phone number is Very good, thank you. Can I have your email, please? Yes, sure. My email is what? At. Dot. <laughs> Very good. And your full name, please? Very good. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Now, maybe you don't know all the introduction yet. But you will. Because the next class, every single one of you will be practicing this. We will, one turn, it will be you asking me the questions. Next one, I will be asking you the questions. We will learn how to do the formal, the informal, and we will learn how to do it in different situations. We'll have three different situations. We'll have a business meeting, like an interview. We will have a very casual setting. Or maybe we are at a party or at a shoe hospital or a church, wherever. And then we will also have immigration. Because that is very important. How many people have traveled? How many people like the immigration officers? Are they nice people? They are not famous for being nice. But as somebody who has gone through immigration more than a hundred times, more than a hundred, on different continents, in different countries, I do know how to talk to them, and I've only been detained one time. Detained. 
Okay? So we will learn all three situations. And how to speak it perfectly. The next class. It will be less teaching. And more practicing. Okay? 